Hi everyone. Um, I'm just going to do a kind of a hybrid class. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of bar and bar actually has yoga in it, a little bit of dance, um, but I might add some other, it's going to be not, nothing super intense. Um, I might kind of just mix styles a little bit. Um, my goal is to stretch, um, also build some strength, practice balance, um, reduce stress. So you could have a chair close by. I've got my office chair right here. You can also use a wall or feel free to skip all of that. Um, when we're practicing our balance, doing bar and even in yoga, um, just think of pulling your belly toward your spine. Um, you want to kind of have like a Think of having a really strong core and sending your tailbone down to the ground so in case you don't have something close by to hold on to. Um, you could also think of doing that to help you keep your balance, but feel free to use a chair. Um, sometimes, for instance, in using a chair for bar, standing up, um, you could do it like this, right? So as, you, as you're, if we're doing like some what are called plies and releves. You've got your chair for balance or, sorry that's loud. You could also have it off to the side or again a wall close by so that you just have something to hold on to. Um, we'll do just a little bit. Um, feel free to grab a mat so that you have some cushioning. Um, you could also just, um, I, I'm going to head down to the mat eventually, um, but for part of it you could also be off of your mat. So if you want to just be like, I've got a bare floor here. Well. A pergo, probably pergo floor. So kind of see what feels good to you. So I'm going to do probably both. But it's nice to also have the cushioning of a mat, even if you're standing up and doing bar. So again, bar is a mix of dance and yoga, Pilates. Um, so for instance, obviously we can do Pilates on the mat, but there's even standing Pilates where you're kind of focusing on your abs. So um, if I can remember to do it, um, I might help us build a little bit of core strength standing up. So you're also practicing your balance when you're doing that. Um, after we warm up, um, it would be something like going like this, you know, or um, maybe being on this kind of having your feet in train tracks um, and kind of going like this. So again, you're drawing your belly toward your spine. Um, you could also grab some light weights, maybe two to five pounds. Um, I'm not going to use weights just yet, but you might see me adding them in in other classes. So feel free to add some weights in. For instance, when we're doing our our bar portion, um, you could just focus on your lower body, or maybe you add weights in. Or you could use a couple water bottles. So again, you'd be doing something like this. But of course, you can do it without weights too just to build some strength too, super, super important to keep that muscle mass up. Another example would be, um, you could add weights in here or your water bottle. And again, you could be on or off your mat when you're doing something like that. So <laughs> again, kind of a hybrid class, nothing too major. Um, I will be doing a couple classes. Um, I would like to do a more intense yoga class, so I'll do that at some point, kind of like a vinyasa class. Power Vinyasa. Um, I'll do a more intense bar class. Um, I'm also, my plan is to do like a restorative yoga class. So um, if you really need to de-stress or just take it super easy or if you're, um, if you're not feeling very well or have low energy, it's a really good way to um, build energy up and kind of de-stress. So I'll be doing a restorative yoga class. I might even do a dance class like ballet. So, or just a full on and or full on bar class. So again, this is kind of a hybrid class. So um, feel free to, again, to always make it your own. Do what works for you. Um, my name is Edie Summers and um, let's go ahead and start. So feel free to be on your mat or you could be off of it and bring your heels together. And again, remember you can hang on to something if you need to. You want to find where your hips naturally turn out. Um, turn open, kind of like find your hip sockets open. Actually, maybe I will go on my mat here. Let's do some plies. So you could use arms for balance here too. You want to relax your shoulders. You're sending your knees over your toes here. Remember, feel free to hang on to something, whether it's your chair or the wall. Draw your belly toward your spine here. <clears throat> Let's try plie and then keep rising up, releve. 
and plie and relevé. So again, I've got my wall close by. You can have one arm on your wall or on a chair. Plie, now you can even add arms in, maybe you raise arms overhead. If you want to dial it up, keep sending your tailbone down to the ground. You also could skip the relevé and just do the plie. Imagine you're drawing oxygen in here, so you're starting to oxygenate your body. Good, bo good, bo good job there. So let's warm up a little bit more. So just step your feet a little bit wider. Again, you still want to send your toes over your ankles, sending your tailbone down to the ground. So we don't want to stick our, um, don't stick your tailbone out like this. You don't want to tuck it under too far either, but just imagine sending it gently down toward the ground. And we're now in the, what's called second position. Again, feel free to hang on to something here, or you can use your arms for balance. Let's do plies here. These are like demi plies. So you just want to find your, <clears throat> excuse me, range of motion here. And notice how you're having to use more oxygen now. Plie. Now, if you get a bit of a shorter second, you could add a relevé in here. And again, use your arms for balance. So you can place your arms wherever you like. If you want to dial it up a little bit, you can bring them over your head. Drawing belly to spine, I'm going to kind of alternate, or you could switch it up if you want to challenge your brain. Keep your brain sharp. Anything at all that feels good to you, you could just keep your arms down to you and just kind of let them float open to either side. Good job. So those are plies from second position. Um, now we're going to try curtsies. Curtsies are super fun. And um, when we do them in bar, it kind of helps us warm up. Um, and it also practices grace, which is super nice. That's a great part of dance is, is building that grace. So stand on one leg. You're, you're, you're still finding your turnout. And you're going to point your other foot. It's called a tondu. Tondu and curtsy. You're going to draw your leg, your foot behind your other leg. And same arm is going to follow. Going to kind of help you balance. Now you could add weights in here. One or two weights. You could have a weight in your arm that's following your leg if you want to dial it up. Or maybe you have weights in both hands and you cross them in front. Keep breathing here, tondu and curtsy. So really, you can do big or small curtsies here. Tondu and curtsy. Good job there. Feel free to keep going on that side or you can switch sides. So I'm gonna, I keep getting these, uh, I'm just gonna close that so I can see what's going on. Getting a lot of notifications there. Let's switch feet. So now stand on your other leg. Still finding your turnout where your hip socket opens. Tondu, point your other foot and curtsy again. Maybe one, the same arm as leg, just follows your leg. You could cross both arms in front. Again, feel free to add weights in here. You're really gonna notice if you add weights and how you're um, also building strength and core strength and practicing your balance. I'll just do a few each side here. Again, feel free to keep going there. Let's come back where we started. So we'll come back to First position, your heels are together. So I'll pull up my pant legs here a little bit so you can see where my heels are together. Plie here. Make sure that you've got your balance. You could hold on to something. You can add your plie, even relevé in. Maybe add arms in. Tailbones headed down to the ground. Keep breathing here. Make sure you're really increasing your oxygen as you dial it up. Shoulders are relaxed. Good job here. I'm going to head back on my mat, but just make sure that you um, are feeling stable. Good job. Let's try second position. So, again, if you want to rise up to um, that releve where you let your heels float up, maybe have a shorter second, or maybe you just want to do plies. Breathe. Take your time. Find your pace. You should really start to feel your body warming up here, feel your legs warming up. And again, we're not going to do too much today, but these are really good um, kind of basic bar skills to have. Good job there. Let's try some curtsies. Oh, remember, you could also do plie, relevé. So really practicing your balance there too. Draw your belly toward your spine as you rise up, tailbone heads down to the ground. Maybe switch up arms. I'm going to add a little bit of more of a dance element in. Good job there. 
Now let's try curtsies again. So again, just stand on one leg, opening your turn out here, tondu, and maybe you draw both arms in front or just one. Feel free to add weights in. Finding your pace here. Tondu and curtsy, you could do really tiny curtsies or maybe as you're warming up, you notice you want to do a bigger curtsy. Good job here. And again, you could go keep going on that side or head to the other side. You should really feel like you've, you've pretty much been warming up at this point. You should feel pretty warmed up. Tondu and curtsy. The weight's optional. Bar is a really great way to work out because you almost don't, re it's so much fun you almost don't realize what you're doing. Um, you don't realize that it's a workout sometimes because it's really fun. Dance is the same way. Um, I would say yoga is a little bit like that too. Speaking of yoga, let's do a little bit of yoga. So that was a little bit of more of the dance element of bar. Let's get um, back on our mats. And if you were using weights, then you'd be adding sort of like the... Um, the uh, kind of fitness training or weight training element of bar in as well. Um, let's get on our mats or you want to be on a carpet, something where you have some traction and come closer to the top of your mat, feet are together. This is Tadasana. Again, send your tailbone down to the ground. We're going to stretch here. So just shift your weight to one leg and let your other heel float up. So finding your balance here and maybe let your um, leg keep floating up so your foot can be pointed or flexed here. <sighs> Try to square off your hips here. Now feel free to hold here a little bit longer or you can take an inhale and an exhale. Just step your foot back. We're coming into crescent lunge here. So this is from yoga. Your feet are in train tracks. Hips are square. You could bring hands to heart center and find your balance here. Or if you want to dial it up a little bit, Maybe bring arms over your head and kind of turn in your pinky fingers a little bit. And breathe here. Crescent lunge. You should feel a really nice stretch here in your hip flexor. Now, just for fun, let's try warrior three from here. So you're going to take a nice deep inhale. And on an exhale, you're going to swing your leg back. So if you want to keep it really intense, you could reach your arms to the front. If you want to keep it more mellow. You can bring hands to heart center or reach your arms to the side or even to the back. And feel free to hold here, building strength, practicing your balance, or I'll meet you back in your crescent lunge. And now, let's keep practicing our balance. Arms and heel float down. Your knee is soft here. Your right knee is, or your, your knee where your leg is back is soft. Rise up. Arms and heel float down. Rise up, arms and heel float down. Let's try warrior three again. So take a nice deep inhale. On an exhale, then you're gonna swing your leg to the back and maybe you swing your arms to the front, hips are square, or you could bring hands to heart center. Makes it a little less intense. You could also reach arms to the side. If you wanna be up a little bit higher, and just do airplane, feel free to do that. And you just rise back up and set both feet back together. Let's stretch our spines here a little bit. So arms reach high to the sky, inhale. Nice deep inhale, on an exhale, just roll down through your spine, forward fold. Just passing through. We're gonna do a halfway lift here. You're gonna feel a nice stretch in your in hamstrings. So place your hands on your shins or upper thighs here. Weights on the front of your feet. And feel free to hold there. Or you can take an inhale. On an exhale, just roll down. Maybe soften your knees. Let your head float down. And just roll back up through your spine. Take your time there. So we're going to do the other side. We're here in what's called Tadasana. So maybe do some shoulder shrugs. I feel like someone's writing to me. I'll have to check it later. Um, thanks for watching. <laughs> Do some shoulder shrugs. Let's do the other side. So I'm going to just turn this way so you can see me. Again, you want to be closer to the top of your mat. I'm not going to go too far up because I'll, I'll be out of the screen, I think. Let's just do the, make sure we do the other leg. So we're back in what's called Tadasana. Send your tailbone down to the ground. Then shift your weight to one leg and step the other leg back. Feet are in train tracks. You can bring your hands to heart center. Or again, if you want to dial it up, bring arms up overhead. Turn your pinky fingers in just a little bit. 
Now feel free to stay just like this and you can practice your balance and get that hip flexor stretch. Or if you want to take an inhale here and exhale, rip, stretch forward, swing your leg back coming into warrior three. So you're really building strength here. And you can fly your arms to the side. Traditionally, you put them to the front. You really see what feels good to you there. And then I'll meet you back in crescent lunge. And then arms and heel reach high to the sky. Inhale and exhale, arms and heel float down. So your, other, your back knee is soft here. Really finding your balance, nice strong core. You should feel a really nice stretch here in your hip flexor. Breathe here. Good job here. Now let's try warrior three again. Take an inhale first. On an exhale, reach your back leg to the back, maybe arms to the front, or you can bring hands to heart center, reach them to the side. Oh look, I've got my chair close by. I'm gonna use it. <laughs> Remember, you can also be up higher in an airplane. Just make sure you square off your hips. Good job there. And then rise back up if you're in warrior three and step your back leg to meet your front leg. Reach high to this guy. Inhale, mountain. And then again, let's roll back down through our spine. And let's stay down here. Bring your feet underneath your hips. You can tent through your hands and sway side to side. Kind of feel that nice stretch in your lower back or maybe you hold on to opposite arms. Right above elbows or just stay in the center. I'll meet you back in the center here. Just take your time. Let your hands float back down to your mat. On your own time, you could even do a shoulder rinse here. So you have one, have one hand to hold on to the other. Feel that nice shoulder rinse. Let your hands float down. Let them float back down to your mat. Just soften your knees here. You could even do some plies here. So this would be a little bit of bar influence. You've got feet underneath your hips. Your head is floating down. Plies here. So notice how your feet are facing to the front. Instead of being opening to the side, that's a nice way to kind of stretch and build some strength. You should feel that in your quads. And then just take your time rolling up here. You should feel a really nice stretch in your spine and back as you float up. And, and just keep your feet underneath your hips here. So let's do a little more yoga. We're going to do cat and cow standing up. So inhale, lift through your heart. Exhale, bend your knees. Knees are right over your toes, round through your back. Imagine you're hugging a big beach ball. Then rise up. It's really important to keep moving. Try to move in some capacity every day or most days if you can. And um, You want to focus on building strength and doing cardio. So you can do cardio. Cardio can definitely, to some degree, um, be accomplished by um, yoga or bar, depending on, or even dance, depending on um, how, how fast you're moving. Um, you can also build muscular endurance. Let's head back down. So feet are underneath your hips. Just roll back down. But a lot of times I'll add in walking or um, something else as well. Just listen to your body. You want to make sure you stretch and focus on flexibility. Then, of course, um, practicing your balance. Um, so, again, bar is really good because you can get a lot of those things in there. Um, tent through your hand, one hand, turn to the side, so your other arm high to the sky. Just take your time there, head back to the center, take an inhale. On an exhale, turn and look the other direction. Feeling that nice stretch. Now while we're down here, let's do Gorilla from Yoga. So lift up the tops of your toes and walk your fingertips underneath. You're going to feel a stretch here, maybe in hamstrings, maybe lower back. You're also bringing your head below your heart there. You can stay there or lift up the tops of your toes and walk your hands, your fingertips back out. And just roll back up here, take your time. That was Gorilla. So um, when you bring your head below your heart, you're um, helping your nervous system relax. So if you're feeling stressed out, um, bring your head below your heart. So a good example of that would be child's pose. So And also downward dog. So let's try both. Or again, feel free to do what you want to do. Um, I'll meet you back toward the top of your mat. And keep in mind, I did just a little bit of bar, but we might add a little bit more in... Um, 
in terms of practicing balance. There's a lot you can do on bar um, on your on the ground too. Oh, I know. Before we get to child's pose and downward dog and doing a little bit of bar and yoga on the mat, let's try standing abs. So I'll do this in my bar class. Again, um, you could um, add some weights in here, one or two. Um, let's come back to first position where your heels are together. I'm hanging onto my wall here. Again, you can hang onto your chair or you can have your chair in front of you. I've got my heels together like this. And you're gonna raise one knee up. So I'm gonna move this chair. We're gonna build some strength here. And I've got the same arm as leg up here. Oh, sorry, it's supposed to be opposite arm as leg. So I'm gonna hang on to my chair. One knee floats up, opposite arm is leg. Take an inhale and an exhale, you're gonna swing leg across and then open. Swing it across and open. Nice strong standing leg. Keep breathing here. Now, feel free to keep going there or for again, for a little bit of our influence, tiny pulses here. Keep your leg in its hip socket here. Tiny pulses. You're gonna really feel yourself building strength here. There's a lot you can do with bar to build strength and muscular endurance. Um, it can feel like a pretty complete workout. Let's try the other side. So I'm, I'm keeping it pretty mellow today, but feel free to take this and keep going. Um, I'm coming back to first position. Your heels are together. This is what it would look like um, if, you, if I were showing with my hands. And again, raise other, other leg up. Your knee is bent. Opposite arm is leg. Inhale and exhale, swing leg across. Bring elbow to knee. These are standing abs. Working your side abs here. Breathe here. Now again, feel free to keep going. Sometimes we'll do quite a bit of these in our bar class. Or whenever you're ready, come back with knee open to the side and tiny pulses. Feel free to hang on to something. Tiny pulses, keeping your, staying in your hip socket there. Good job there. Now, let's do one more standing abs here. So I'm gonna come back on my yoga mat here. Um, you wanna be standing diagonally so feet are in train tracks. Now you could grab one or two weights here. Um, I don't have any weights with me, but um, if you were to have a weight, I'm gonna pretend this is a weight, you could hold it like up here. Take an inhale and an exhale. You're gonna bring your back leg forward, belly to spine round through your back. Bring that weight or just your hands towards your knee and then step back out. You're gonna notice how this is really Multi-purpose, you're practicing balance, building core strength. Use your gaze for balance here. Go at your own pace. Inhale and exhale. Again, you're, if you're just tuning in, I'm holding a block, but it's supposed to be a, a weight. But if you, you could do this without weights too. Great job. And again, feel free to keep going. Again, sometimes we'll do like up to 16. Um, try the other side whenever you're ready. So. You want to be the other direction so that your other leg is in the back, feet are in train tracks. Keep your knees soft here. If you want to add one or two weights in, you can hold it in your hands. Take an inhale and on an exhale, round through your back. Bring your back leg forward, knee is bent. Bringing your hands or weight or weights towards your center. Inhale and exhale. Notice how you're building strength here, practicing your balance. Inhale and exhale. Good job. And again, feel free to keep going there. I'm keeping it more mellow today, but you might be able to see how doing something like that, especially when you start adding weights in, um, starts to get to be a really good workout. And again, there's a lot more we would do with bar standing up, um, including like here's another example of doing abs standing up. Kind of adding on. Now before we were doing it, we were going like this across. You can also do it like this. Again, engaging your side abs there. You could do the other side. This also helps you practice your balance. So just like you would in a dance class, you wanna use your gaze to help you balance. And also, I'm, I'm holding onto a chair here. Okay, good job. So again, that's something else, another way you could build ab strength. Again, that's kind of a Pilates influence. That'd be the Pilates part of bar. Let's go down to the ground. You know what? I'm gonna go grab some water. Um, I'll meet you on your mat in what's called child's pose. Let's take a break. So this is what I was talking about, how it's a good way to bring your head below your heart. You can just get on your mat or on your carpet. You want to, 
You could reach high to the sky and then reach down toward your toes and then just drop down onto your knees. And then maybe from knees you just drop down onto your forearms and let your head float down. Or maybe you bring the edges of your feet together, create more of a V shape. Um, you could sparkle out your fingertips. You could also use a block if you want to be up higher. Um, feel free to get comfortable in child's pose. We're going to hold it there a few minutes. I'm going to grab some water. I'll be right back. Okay, so you're in child's pose. I'm just seeing somebody wrote something. Lisa Morris. Hi, Lisa. Good workout. Good work. I haven't done any exercises for quite some time. I'm not always able to either, but I should get back to you. Oh, and Elisa. Oh, thank you, Lisa. Hi, Lisa. And I see some other people watching. I, I, If I knew how to respond better, I would respond, but I don't want to turn this off by accident. <laughs> I'll respond to you all later. <laughs> okay, um, it's really nice to have you here. <laughs> okay, um, but I hear what you're saying. Yeah, um, yeah, you know, it's... Lisa, you just um, been busy working part time. I know it's you know what? I think I had coronavirus or I wasn't feeling very well for a very long time. And some of you are, some of us are in 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 the you know the chronic fatigue community too. And some of there are all sorts of different reasons why we're not able to work out sometimes. And workout is probably even the wrong term. You know, just like move when you can and. Um, it's it's a it's a complicated issue because I find that like I said I'm gonna do a restorative yoga class sometimes I I often feel better unless I'm totally wiped out then forget it I I'm just gonna rest I might do some restorative yoga in my bed but um, in general I find if I have an ounce of energy or more I try to do something because it generally increases my energy um, and you always want to kind of see what those li those limits are. Um, yeah, thanks. I I totally hear what you're saying, Lisa. And um, I know it's a it's a it's a long subject. It's a complicated subject because um, yeah, exercise is <laughs> again maybe movement and breath work is um, is a better is a better way of describing it. You know, just. Kind of bringing more oxygen into your body and and stretching which can relieve stress and um anyway i'll respond afterwards i know some of you have probably been holding in child's pose for a while you're like what's going on okay so child's pose again you could have a block for this um if you want to put your head on your block it's kind of nice the goal is just to bring your head below your heart so I'm doing more of a modified version here where I've got my knees lined up with my hips. Sometimes, a lot of times, I'll just rest on my forearms, let my head float down. But traditional child's pose is you bring the edges of your feet together, kind of create a V shape. And you could sparkle out through your fingertips. Let me show you how you can do it in a reverse way, like lying down doing child's pose, which can be really nice if you're not feeling very well. Um, you're not really bringing your head below your heart that way, but it still feels really good. So you just turn around, it also takes the pressure off your knees. And you want to place your hand underneath one leg so you're taking your time, rolling down, and then again you could create that V shape with your legs and feet, bring the edges of your feet together, hold on to your knees, and can you see how this is kind of like a reverse child's pose. This is a restorative pose. Sometimes you can hang out for a while. So, it's, if you know, and sometimes just doing child's pose and a couple other poses um, might be all you need for the day. Um, if another restorative pose that's a little more active is downward dog, so feel free to stay in child's pose or you could experiment with a couple different versions. If you want to try downward dog, um, I'll meet you in tabletop. So you've got your wrists underneath your shoulders here and knees underneath your hips. And then from tabletop, you're just going to tuck your toes under and take an inhale. And then on an exhale, send your hips high to the sky. So you're pressing back through your, the palms of your hands. Now you can, you're definitely going to notice that this is more active. It's a more active pose, but you still have your head below your heart here. So again, feel free to hold there if that feels good to you or Again, 
You could just drop down into your forearms, let your head float down, or maybe you're doing child's pose. Bring the edges of your feet together, or again, turn around. So take a few moments, just kind of experiment, see what feels good to you. Now notice if you're doing a reverse child's pose, you can do this on your bed. Um, another good one you can do on the bed is, from the, and we'll get, we'll get to this later, is, um, or in our restorative yoga class is butterfly. If you're feeling, you know, super exhausted or stressed out and you don't really have the energy to work out, I recommend just doing butterfly. So um, feel free to try it. How about I meet you here? Let's just try it before I show you a couple more things. Kind of mixing that bar, bar and yoga. Butterfly. So you want to, if you're in child's pose or downward dog, you can walk up, walk up with your hands or drop back down into your knees and then turn around. And then, then you want to make sure that you're protecting your back. Place your hand underneath one leg. Lower yourself down to the ground. Um, Bruce, bring the edges of your feet together here. So it's kind of similar to a reverse child's pose except for... Um, you're more kind of resting on the ground. Now, if you have a couple blocks close by, or you can even use pillows if you're on your bed, you can put, um, I only have one block right here, but you could put two blocks or pillows underneath both knees. And this is a great pose to, you can really hang out here for quite a while. So again, I'll do a restorative yoga class. Um, this is butterfly or Sukta Baddha Konasana on the ground. And it's so good to de-stress and um, now since we're doing more of like a, a bar class here building strength feel free to stay here in butterfly or <laughs> place your hands behind your head if you want to build some strength here with me core strength let's do some a uh, little bit of crunches here so you want to look up to the sky inhale here exhale as you rise up now I have to say my energy levels aren't that great right now I mean some days they are, but in general, I've still been building strength from having the coronavirus, so I'm taking it pretty easy. However, now notice how I'm also now building um, my side core muscles again. I'm now going side to side, bringing elbow to knee. So again, you know, listen to your body. I'm only going to do a few. Like, I'm pretty much, I'm just about done here. But it can be good to build strength, too. Listen to your body. Feel free to keep going there, or maybe you head back to butterfly. Um, so that's a nice kind of way to add some core building strength in there. Maybe bring your knees up toward the center. You can give your knees a hug. Maybe even bring nose to knees. Give yourself a hug, and then lower your head back down. Let center feet up to the sky. Um, keep your knees soft here. You could flex your hands and feet. This is a nice inverted pose, so you're kind of sending the blood rushing the other way. This can feel really nice. Again, this is something you could do in your bed. Um, you know, if you just if you don't really have the energy to, to kind of work out, do a couple restorative poses. And I'll do a whole class on it. And a lot of times, um, let's come back to sitting up. Place your hand underneath one leg and pull yourself up. Um, a lot of times... Um, if I have the energy, if I don't have a lot of energy, but I have some, I'll, I'll, do, I'll do like a really mellow workout and I'll alternate between strengthening and surrendering poses. I'll take my time and then what I notice often is that my energy starts to build. And another good way to build energy is Qigong. So I'll, I'll try to remember to do a Qigong class, um, which is super, super mellow. Um, and that's a fantastic way to build energy. Um, Actually, let me show you a little bit of that, and then we'll do a little bit more kind of of the hybrid hybrid class. I guess that would be part of a hybrid class. So you can stay where you are if you want to follow me. Maybe come back to tabletop, and then you could come back to a forward fold, or just get up however you want to if you want to try this. And let me just show you what I mean. So let me stay on my mat this morning. Um, Let's try swimming like a bear. This is from Qigong, and it's a super, super mellow way to move a little bit and also build energy. It's super, it just helps to build that Qi in your body. So, um, I'm going to...
Bring your feet so you've got one leg behind the other, not too far behind feet or in train tracks. And just imagine that you're swimming forward and then shift back and scoop your hands under. So you're getting a nice, gentle flow going. But I'll, again, I'll try to remember to do a whole class that's kind of like along these lines of qigong. But you can notice how this will help you build strength, but also really, it's helping to build your qi, it's helping to build your energy levels. Super, super mellow. Um, and I, rec I recommend Lee Holden for qigong. He is phenomenal. I can't recommend him enough. Um, try the other side. Again, that's something you could keep doing for a while. If you want to switch sides, step your other leg behind feet or in train tracks, your knees are soft here. And you're just going to shift your shift forward and imagine your arms are swimming. And then shift back and scoop your hands underneath and you're shifting your from front leg to back leg. Shifting to the front, shifting to the back, scoop under. It's super mellow. I can always feel my energy building. Yeah, so another example. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Someone's going to apologize. Hang on just a second. I'm so sorry. I'm going to turn it off because it might throw me off live. Um, I apologize for that. Let me show you something else. This is from Qigong. I'm sorry, this is Tai Chi. Just try to make your arms like clouds. That's going to turn off in a second here. So there are a couple ways to do this. And again, you can go as slow as you like here. The real simple way is just imagine your arms are, you're literally waving your arms like clouds. You could also do it a little more advanced where you've got your bottom hand facing down to the earth and your top palm is looking toward you. And you're going to shift from one side to the other. Look at your top palm, but be aware of your bottom hand. And then you're going to switch. Switch hands here. Look at your top palm. Your bottom palm is facing down to the earth. So this is also good for your brain because you're, you're having to be aware of both hands. You're shifting from one side to the other. Switch hands again. Looking at your top palm, it's facing toward your head, your face. Your bottom palm is facing down to the earth. And then you shift from one side to the other. This is really calming, but it's also building energy. This is from Tai Chi. It's called wave arms like clouds. In this version, since you're being aware of both hands, your bottom hand is like the shadow of the cloud. So anyway, I'll do a whole class on that. Um, let's practice our balance a little bit more. Again, listen to your body here. I'll meet you back in Downward Dog, and I'm going to show you something that I learned in a bar class when I was getting um, certified in bar. I found it really hard at first, but now I love doing it. Um, it's a great way to practice balance. You're basically going from Downward Dog to a, a low lunge, rising up into crane, and then reversing the whole thing. So. Um, don't feel compelled to do it, but if you're if you're interested, um, I found this a really good challenge. So, and this is something that I would do more in a in a bar class where we head down to our mat. Sometimes in bar we're just standing up and we do a whole standing bar class, but sometimes we do some standing and some on the mat. Um, so again, you could start at the top of your mat. Um, I'll meet you back in Tadasana. This is from yoga. Just want to imagine that you're standing like a mountain. Send your tailbone down to the ground here. This is a really powerful pose. Like, you know, if you can imagine kind of opening through your heart here and your palms are open and kind of building that, that sense of power and confidence. Just finding your breath here. And then you're going to reach arms high to the sky. So this is called mountain. It's, it's basically the same thing as Tadasana. Take a nice deep inhale here, and on an exhale, roll down through your spine. So now from here, just bend your knees, place your hands on your mat, and step your feet back to downward dog. So again, we're back here. Some of you might have been practicing this. So maybe walk the dog here. So your, your feet are lined up with your hips. You're pressing back through your hands. You should feel a stretch in your heels. This is a really nice stretch. Settle back into the center. Send your hips high to the sky. Now feel free to just hold here in downward dog, or again, you could drop down into your knees 
and go back to child's pose if you want to. Or if you want to follow me and practice your balance here, building strength, I'll meet you back in downward dog. So you're going to shift weight to one leg. Send your other leg high to the sky. Three-legged dog. Take an inhale. Nice deep inhale. On your exhale, step that leg through. Tent through your hands. You're in a low lunge here. Now, again, you could stay right here in your low lunge. Or maybe you're going to really ground through your foot here that you're resting on, and you're going to engage your core, push your back foot off the mat, and you're going to rise up. Bend your knee, your back knee. Arms come overhead. You're here in crane. I'm pointing my foot, so I know it takes, it takes some time to get the, the hang of this, and then let's reverse the whole thing, <laughs> come back to a low lunge. So now, instead of tenting through your hands, put your palms on the ground, and then send your leg back high to the sky, three-legged dog. You should feel a nice stretch there, and then put that leg down, press back through both hands, find your, find your kind of center here. Let's try the other side. So send other leg high to the sky, inhale, make sure you're inhaling, and then exhale, step your leg through, tent through your hands here, so you're up a little bit higher. So now from here, maybe take another inhale, on an exhale, you're going to engage your core, bend your back knee, find your balance, you're going to rise all the way up to crane, I'm pointing my foot where my knee is bent, crane, rising up, and then reverse the whole thing, lunge. Grab, place your palms on the ground, and then send your back leg high to the sky, lower your leg. Good job. Now, again, feel free to head down to child's pose, or if you want to try it again with me, you can. I'm walking the dog here. I'll meet you back in the center. Start with that first leg again. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, step your foot through, tent through your hands. Take your time here. When I first started doing this, I had to go slowly. Arise into crane. <laughs> Take your time. Oh boy. Back into lunge. Plant your palms on the ground. Three legged dog. Inhale and exhale. Lower that leg down. Maybe walk the dog. Press back through your palms. Do the other side. Leg floats up. Inhale. Exhale. Step your foot through through, and tent through your hands here. You're going to rise into crane. Nice engaged core balance. You're going to feel like it's a huge accomplishment when you get this. Back to lunge. Ground through your palms. Leg flies back. Inhale. Three-legged dog. Exhale. Now drop onto your knees and let's head back to child's pose. We're almost done, I promise. Um, so again, find your version of child's pose. Head drops back down below your heart. And breathe. So again, notice how, now that's dialing it up pretty far. You don't have to go that far, you don't have to dial it up that much. But notice how we just alternated between, between doing something more strengthening and now something that's more um, surrendering. Again, feel free to stay in your child's pose there. Take your time. I'll meet you back here in tabletop. So you've got your wrists underneath your shoulders, knees underneath your hips. So let's do side plank. Again, feel free to follow along if you want to. Um, you could always start to head down to the ground if you just need to rest. Step one knee in front, and then walk your hand in front of your knee. You're going to turn to the side, flex your foot where your leg is long, draw belly to spine here, and then send your arm high to the sky. So you're building core strength here, and arm strength. So I'm doing a modified plank here where my I'm standing on my knee in front. If you, if you want to do full plank and you know what that is, feel free to step your other leg out there. You could stuck, kind of rest on the edges of your feet. I'm just doing a modified plank here. Now let's try something here to build core strength. Turn and weave your arm in between your arm and leg. Still drawing your belly toward your spine and then unwind. So it's a nice way to kind of add some strengthening in there. Feel free to hold there or I'll meet you back in tabletop. 
Drop back down into your, the palms of your hands, lining up knees underneath your hips, and lengthen through your spine here. Breathe here. Maybe take a few rounds of breath and notice how we're alternating between strengthening poses and again more mellow poses here. And let's try the other side. So step your other knee in front and place your other hand in front of your knee. And you're just going to turn the other direction, flex your foot, send your arm high to the sky. This also helps you kind of travel through space ways that you normally wouldn't. You can maybe reach arm in between arm and leg, creating a twist as well, and then unwind. Take an inhale. Feel free to go to full plank there too. Just take your time. And I'll meet you back in tabletop. Just step one knee in front and sit on your hips and you can swing legs around. And um, we're gonna, we'll head down to the ground first. Um, this is definitely a hybrid class. Um, <laughs> I, I'll i make some more like uh, classes that are very specific classes, but um, sometimes, a lot of times, you know, just like when you're cooking or um, being creative, it's nice to just do what feels good. So, um, a lot of times when I'm um, moving on my own, that's what I do, is I just kind of make a hybrid class. But um, I just wanted to give you a taste of a couple things. So, this is called Easy Pose. Let's just focus on our breath just a little bit. So, now we're heading more and more into the yoga. The yoga part. We started with bar. Catch your breath here. Or just notice it. I heard someone say today, I forget where, um, or the context, but it was just take one conscious breath. Really noticing how bringing awareness into your breath or anything you do just makes everything easier. It makes you more present. It makes you more able to handle everything that's happening around you and, and feel more empowered. Just notice your belly here rising and falling and just being grateful for whatever your body was capable of doing and is capable of doing and just also being kind to yourself and practicing self-compassion. If you ever feel like you're hitting a wall, just send yourself some love and practice self-compassion. I find that dissolves a lot of that fear around, oh, my body can't do this, or I should be doing this, or just send yourself some love and breathe. Feel your mind settling. We might travel back here. Let's head down to the ground. So um, we'll come back to the front of our mat. And so um, you could bring your weights with you if you wanted to do a little bit more um, that would be a little more bar influenced. Um, let's try something here. Again, I don't have weights, but um, you can sit cross-legged at the top of your mat or your carpet. And if you had weights here, you would be building your, your biceps here. You can also do a little bit of um, triceps, but you also, can also build core strength here. Let's do just a little bit more. So imagine you're holding weights or just curl your arms and draw your belly toward your spine. So listen to your body here. It's probably better with weights. So I'm going to do just a little bit since I don't have them because that's going to stabilize you. So yeah, I would say it's probably better to do that with weights. But also, bring your hands up now. Press your palms together and just drop your hands behind and then press them up. So find your range of motion here. Now if you have your weights, you could hold on to one weight and drop that weight behind, press it up. Maybe switch hands a little bit. If you don't have weights, just press your palms together. So we're just notice how you're just building um, some a little bit of um, bicep strength here and tricep. Um, so again, I think if you're doing this one, you probably want to have your weights. But draw your belly toward your spine. 
There's also this one that you can do if you did have a weight, probably just one weight. Drop it behind you. I'm using my block as an example. A block actually works really well, by the way. You just press your palms into your block, and it's a nice stretch as well. We want to make sure that we engage our upper body too. Um, let's try one more thing here. Um, you can put your weight or block down and have your hands facing toward your knees. And keep your elbows soft here. And just feel that nice shoulder stretch. You could even shift back a little bit. Feel that in your shoulders. Or maybe you're just more sitting upright and maybe kind of, kind of tenting through your fingers. Just feeling that shoulder stretch. You can even bring them to the front and round to your back again. Imagine you're hugging a ball, then rise up. Inhale, lift through your heart. Exhale, round through your back. Imagine you're hugging a ball. So feel free to do that a few times. You can even put your hands on your knees for that, doing cat and cow. Inhale, look up. Exhale, round through your back. You're building some core strength and upper body strength. Take your time there. I'll meet you back in the center. Um, let's go down to the ground. So bring your feet together, sit up nice and tall in your sits bones, and you can wrap hands across your shins if you want to, or maybe put them underneath your hamstrings. Um, you're gonna feel a subtle core engagement here. Now feel free to go back into boat. You want your hands underneath your hamstrings. Inhale, exhale, flex your feet, rock back. Drop belly to spine. You're, you're sitting up nice and tall on your sit bones. I'm gonna do basic boat because my body doesn't wanna dial it up that much. And each pose is a little bit different. Sometimes, like for instance, when we were practicing our balance, heading up into crane from downward dog, um, my body wanted to move a little bit like that and build some strength. But in boat, my body doesn't wanna do that this morning, so. I'm building subtle core strength here. Maybe you're further back in boat. Just take your time. I'll meet you in basic boat where your feet are planted on the ground. Just reach arms high to the sky and take an inhale. Exhale, wrap hands underneath your hamstrings. Drop your chin down toward your chest and take your time here rolling down. Now another thing you could do is do rock and roll. This is from Pilates. So you could go like this. You could do rock and roll, it's kind of fun. And it can help you build some core strength. If you're really feeling adventurous, you could even rise into pike. So you extend legs up, reach toward your toes or ankles. Make sure you're drawing your belly toward your spine. So you can use rock and roll to get down, or maybe, again, you just drop your chin down toward your chest. And take your time here, rolling down through your spine. You can drop down into your elbows. I'll make you back in that butterfly pose. Bring the edges of your feet together. Let your knees fall open to either side. Close your eyes here. So you can let arms fall open or maybe you stretch them above your head on the ground. You have a lot of options with your arms. You can even place them on legs or anything at all that feels good to you. Really feel yourself melting here into your mat. Imagine you have no worries. And breathe. Again, come back to that conscious breathing. Take one conscious breath and go from there. Now, feel free to stay here in, in butterfly or Supta Baddha Konasana. If you want to stretch your hips a little bit, which can be really nice to do, especially after you've warmed up, and you've been moving for a while, um, let, your, let your arms come back down to either side and just keep your knees bent. Maybe imagine stacking one knee on top of the other or maybe you support your knee with a hand or your block. You could look up to the sky, trying to keep your upper back on the mat or maybe you take an inhale and on an exhale, extend the other arm out and look across your arm or shoulder. You're gonna feel a really nice stretch here in your hip. Now you can stay here with your knees bent, or maybe you extend your bottom leg out and keep pulling across the top of your top knee. You 
and look back to the center. Now, if you want to get an IT band stretch here, look up to the sky. I'm supporting my leg on the bottom now. Maybe extend that leg long. Now, you could use a strap here as well. I don't have a strap. I do in the house, but if your leg is long, you're getting more of that IT band stretch. Or you can just keep your knee bent. Or feel free to keep both knees bent. And then I'll meet you back in the center. Maybe give yourself a hug here if you need to reset your spine. Inhale. Exhale. Lower your head back down to the ground. Drop both knees to the other side. Coming into a modified supine twist. Feel free to just look up at the sky. Maybe you take an inhale and on an exhale. Turn and look over your opposite arm. This is a modified supine twist, or you can extend your bottom leg out and keep holding across the top of your knee here, your top knee. And again, I probably can't do it on this side, and plus I, I'm going to hit the wall. But you could extend your top leg out and get your IT band stretch here. This is, I'm not quite at the right angle there, but feel free to extend that leg out. You want to look more toward the center though, look up to the sky so you don't hurt your neck. And just take your time, breathe here. Breathe into your muscles and fascia. I'll meet you back in the center. Let's do happy baby. So send your feet high to the sky. You can flex your feet here. Now, depending on how flexible you're feeling, um, you could hold on to your ankles. That's probably where I'm going to have to be this morning. But you could maybe hold on to your big toes or even the outer edges of your feet. You could even rock side to side. You're going to feel this in your lower back, maybe hips. It can be kind of intense, but it feels really good too. Or you can just stay in the center. Your feet and knees are kind of outside of your hips here. You can even press your knees open with your elbows. And then you can stay there in happy baby or maybe again come back to this one, this inversion, where your legs are straight, knees are soft. Even flex your feet. You can just reach up to the sky. Feel that nice stretch. Now take a few moments here just to kind of stretch in any way that might feel good to you. Anything at all. You could do some hamstring stretches. Just take a few moments here. Maybe pass back through butterfly. I'm going to show you one more stretch here before we head into Shavasana. It's a really nice side stretch. And this is a stretch I saw in a lady who did a restorative yoga class on uh, YouTube, and it was for people with chronic fatigue, um, CFS actually. Um, you can extend your legs long and just kind of walk your feet to the bottom diagonal of your mat, and then walk your torso to the opposite diagonal, and then just cross um, your inside ankle over your other ankle. And reach your arms overhead. Now, same leg that's long, not where your foot is crossed, but leg is long. Hold on to that hand with your other hand, and you're going to feel a nice stretch in your side body. Just breathe. Breathe into those spaces in between. Feel free to hold there. You can unwind your hands, kind of scoot back more toward the center, uncross ankles. Let's switch the diagonal here. So inch your way to the other top side of the diagonal and the bottom diagonal here. Now extend opposite leg out and cross your other ankle on top. Extend your arms up high and the same arm as leg that's long, you're going to clasp your other hand with it. And then just kind of gently pull over to the side. So. She called this banasana, almost like you're making the shape of a banana, which should make you chuckle a little bit. <laughs> or not. You could also kind of call it like a crescent lunge, or you're just, you know, you're getting that nice stretch in your side body. And again, feel free to hold there. Or you can unwind your arms, uncross knees and ankles, and kind of scoot your way back to the center. Bend your knees here. Um, really make sure you're protecting your neck if you're scooting around on your mat. Really not the best idea. You want to, I only do it 
usually if I'm only doing Banasana. Um, be careful there. Um, let's do windshield wiper. So, so kind of, you want to pull your lower back back to the mat here and toe heel your feet so they're outside of your hips. You can let your arms fall up into either side. I'm pressing my palms into the ground. Now maybe you just stay like this. Again, make sure you're protecting your lower back. Pull your lower back, tuck your hips back, pull them back. You could windshield wipe your knees side to side, take your time. Sometimes it's nice to hold, or maybe you just sort of float from side to side. And again, you could keep doing this, or maybe it makes you sort of travel into some other stretches and poses. So I've never taken a Feldenkrais, Felden, ugh, Feldenkrais clock class. I can't even say it. Um, Feldenkrais, I believe in that. Somebody help me, help me if I'm saying that incorrectly. In Feldenkrais, however you say it, you just sort of move, I think. And I'm, I don't quote me because I'm not trained in it. But, you know, there's a lot to be said for um, sort of just, you, you know, intuitively moving. Always move from your center, though. Now, if there's anything else you feel like you want to do, again, you can tell I'm a huge fan of butterfly or Supta Baddha Konasana. Sometimes it's nice to do poses a few times because you might travel a little bit more into the pose the second or third time. It also helps you be more mindful. Let me show you one more thing I like to do sometimes on the ground. That's tree on the ground. So keep one knee bent. Extend your other leg out. Now you could put a block underneath your knee here. This is a really nice stretch once you've warmed up. and This is also another nice restorative pose you could do on your mat or maybe on your bed. Imagine you're a tree. Let your palms fall up into either side. You could also stretch your arms above your head. Taking your time there, feel free to hold on that side or past your butterfly. Keep your other knee bent. Extend other leg out. Feel that nice stretch and feel free to put a block underneath your knee or a pillow. Taking your time. Feel free to stay there. Or maybe you extend both legs out. Let your feet fall open. Let your palms fall open. Or just get comfortable. Here in Shavasana, your final resting pose. Close your eyes. Let yourself fully relax here. Let go. Again, imagine you're melting into your mat. Letting all your worries wash away here. Rest and integrate your practice. Don't be afraid to breathe or make funny sounds when you breathe. Just letting yourself be and rest, recharge. Let go and integrate here. You could stay there with feet extended long or maybe you come back to butterfly. Imagine that your body's unwinding here. Now feel free to stay here, wherever you are, in Shavasana, just taking your time. If you're ready to travel out of this, you could deepen through your breath and maybe wiggle toes or fingers. Taking your time here. 
Coming back into a more wakeful state. Maybe bend knees and draw them in toward your chest. And take an inhale. On an exhale, drop your knees to one side. And rest your head on your arm. And feel free to hold there a while. Or you could start to walk yourself back up. And again, feel free to take some time here. Maybe you find some stretches here along the way. Feel free to be creative, you know, especially as your body is feeling more relaxed and maybe you can stretch a little bit more, anything at all that might feel good to you. You might even notice that you have more energy or you feel less stressed. Feel free to stay lying down too, or maybe over time, you make your way back to a seated pose. And just imagine that you're grounding through your seat here. And place your hands where they're comfortable. You can even put one hand on your heart, one hand on your belly. Maybe you send yourself some love or Feel that you could cultivate some energy here. Take a few rounds of breath. Let your mind settle here. Finding that place of peace and presence. If you notice your mind wandering off, just gently bring your awareness, maybe back to your breath, or feel grounded on your mat here. Let yourself breathe from your belly. And practicing that sense of self-compassion and love. Just thanking your body for what you were able to do today. Practicing kindness toward yourself. Noticing your breath. Let your mind calm down and settle down here. You can use your breath to settle your mind. If you feel anxious, breathe deeply and slowly. <sighs> Place your hands where they're comfortable. Anything at all. Finding a single point of focus. Let your focus deepen. Let your mind focus deepen into this focus. Finding the peace that comes with a peaceful mind. And feel free to hold here. Holding that focus, you could imagine it's like a candle where you're just focusing on the flame. Keep drawing your attention back to that, that flickering flame. And feel free to hold here as long as you like. Knowing you can come back here at any point in time. Really finding that peace and sense of power that you can carry with you throughout the rest of your day. Maybe bring hands to heart center. Thank you for practicing with me. Namaste.
And now, as often is, I, I actually have more energy than when I started. So um, I, thank you so much for your responses. I'll respond to some of you after I'm done here. And thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.